Hey, how you doing? Rich Belgi with MinistryAV.com and this will kind of be the part two of the previous tutorial and as you can see I left the room pretty much where it was so we have a uh, 12k projector in the middle and we have eight sharpies with four on one side and four on the other and what we're going to do now is show you how to control these uh, sharpies, these eight sharpies from a lighting controller rather than using the preset controls in the software. The software I use these controls all the time for doing um, trying different ideas and placement but that only gets you so far eventually when you want to start programming cues you gotta control it from your lighting console. So that's what we'll get into now but first um, I'm gonna go in and we're gonna kinda edit this a little bit. This is our fixture menu and as you can see, before, because we were trying different ideas, we copied and pasted stuff, we started in the middle. I want to make this make a little more sense. So I want fixture 1 to be this fixture. And as you can see right now, it's 9. And then it goes to 4. And it really doesn't matter when you're trying ideas in the software, but once you start addressing fixtures, you want things to make a little more sense. And actually, what I'll probably even do is delete all these. I just held down shift to select all of them. I'm going to go clear, clear. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move it out there. And I'm maybe, I wonder if I can, no, I can't. Let me duplicate it. Go to minus 12. Duplicate again. Go to negative 10 feet on the axis. Duplicate again and go to, what will be the next one? 8. Oh, what I do? Negative eight. Okay, so now I got four on that side. And I'm gonna go to the next one. So I'm gonna duplicate and instead of negative eight, go positive eight, and then duplicate it again. Go to ten. Duplicate again. Go to twelve. Duplicate again. Go to fourteen. So as you can see, now we're right in order as we go across. Okay, as you can see now, we have things in a way that makes a little more sense. There, I always do things left to right from my perspective when I'm setting up uh, audio or lighting stuff. So that makes a little more sense. So now as we go into the lighting program, get our DMX addresses, you, you know, we're not randomly placing everything. So let's go save, exit. Uh, let's just go back to something for now. There we go. So everything's working. So now what we need to do to make this work is address these fixtures in our lighting program and also address them to the same addresses inside of Light Converse. And then make the two talk to each other over the same network and we'll be good to go. So we're going to head on over to the lighting software. Alright, so now I'm on my, uh, my MacBook and I'm going to open up a program called Jans Vista and it's a um, fully fledged lighting software. Uh, I know a few people that really like it. The cool thing about it is if you're playing around with um, Light Converse is a fully functioning demo. Now the only catch is once in a while it'll randomly black out your scene and that's just to keep people from from using it for free. So if you see Light Converse uh, black out while we're doing this tutorial it's because I don't have this paid version of the software so that's why. I'm going to create a new show sure whatever name. I'll go full screen Thank you. And it's a pretty easy program to use to do basic stuff. So you have patch, console, fixture chooser, timeline, uh, for programming cues, playback. We're just going to focus on universe one of the patch. And you come over here. We're going to go down and we're going to find clay packy. And there they are. Clay packy. We're going to find 
Sharpie somewhere. I guess it's this one, uh, Sharpie standard. So with it selected, we'll go down here and we'll raise the quantity to eight. We'll start at fixture number one. We'll start at universe one, DMX address one. Spacing 16 channel, which if you remember in our light converse, that's what it is. Do patch, and then it gives you a visual representation here. So 1 through 16. It's hard to see that line, but that's patch 1. From there, it should be the 32 is the second fixture. And then if I remember right, we have to go into preferences to tell this to actually output. Um, maybe it's already outputting ArtNet, but let's go through our options. Patching. It may already be sending out ArtNet. Yes. So we're going to connect universe. No, maybe not. Alright, it's acting a little slow because of the screen capture. Alright, so I think I've set all these universes from Artnet to Universe 1. Alright, so now let's finish setting this up. So now if we go to Fixture Chooser, there we go. We have eight Sharpies, it automatically labeled them across on the screen left to right which is how we did it in the software and if we had multiple types of fixtures we would have an all group and then we'd also have just a sharpie group kind of the same thing in this example since that's all we have but um, if you had other LED fixtures or something this would show up too so for now we're going to drag up the intensity and we're going to move these down and usually when I control fixtures down is towards the audience it's downstage and up is towards the back wall upstage that's just how I like to uh, program so I'm going to do that so when we connect I'm going to see how the lights behave and see if we need to uh, do some patch commands to flip to flip tilt or pan or stuff like that so let's go back and we're going to go back to our sharpies and we're going to use this to help us address the fixtures. So I'm going to go back over to light converse and I'm going to select fixture one. So I'm going to go to fixture one and somewhere in here DMX input. Now what we want, we don't have a physical DMX connection, we have an ArtNet connection. And actually this makes it pretty easy. So we're going to go to net zero Zero is universe one on ArtNet because they start counting at zero. And we're going to hit apply. So now you can see we're on address one. If we go to this one, DMX input, go back to that. Now see it's red, so you're overlapping. So you click on the first open one. So actually, we don't even need the, uh, I forgot about this. We don't even need the address list from the other uh, computer. So I'll go out of that mode. We'll go apply. And I haven't used it, but let's try this. DMX input, this last one. And let's do auto. There you go. Puts it in the first empty spot. So we can go select select B, auto, apply. Let's try this just for fun. This may not work. Let's try. Select the remaining four. Select Auto DMX, and it looks like it, uh, yep, looks like we're all set. So that's the even better way. So I showed you the hard way and the easy way. The hard way is to go one by one. The easy way, if they're all in order, is to select them as a group. So now let's save and exit. Save. And I may have to exit and restart the program, but let's see. Yes. Because right now I'm moving it in the lighting software, and it's not doing anything. So, we'll exit out. All right. I'm going to restart Light Converse. 
And now, put in my silly pin code. I'm going to select visualization only. And the difference here, okay, good, it's working. Now, instead of those manual onboard controls that we're using while testing, now you can see we're receiving ArtNet here. And since I'm transmitting the same universe of ArtNet, that's why you're seeing on zero. You know, in the when I set up Jans Vista, I set it up to where it's outputting the same thing to all the ArtNet ports. Uh, you can still go into DMX and fix stuff. So if you had something addressed wrong, you could still go in the room and change the room. The only difference is you traded out those onboard controls for its receiving signal now from the computer. So let's see here. So let's uh, go home on these. Oh, let me select all. If I go home, you can see all the fixtures move and you can see all the, the little bar graphs dance around. That's the DMX address. If I tilt downstage, they move the direction I want, which is nice. And let's see if what, what way is left and right. And left and right is the way. I like it. Very cool. So now, <clears throat> I'll go back over to here. So now you have intensity options. As you raise and lower intensity, it's raising and lowering. This is all over the network. It's just receiving ArtNet. So you could be outputting the you could be outputting the Jans Vista at the same time you output to your ArtNet nodes on the network. Or, you know, if if this really is a pre visualization setup, you got your laptop with Jans Vista or whatever program you're using, console, anything that outputs ArtNet. Uh in, in our case we usually use an ETC ion. And I won't even fire up the fixtures. They don't even have to be in the room, and I can start programming cues based on what I see. Uh, this program, oh, there's a blackout because it's been on for a couple minutes. Should come back soon. There it goes. Okay. So we got intensity. This knob is position. So you can grab this fader on the side and move it, you know, with one of that, just one axis at a time. You've got color, and it'll let you drag around and in here and try to pick the closest color on this fixture's color wheel to approximate that. So that's nice. My ion, ion console will do that too. Um, you can also come down here, I think. I don't know. I haven't used this enough. There you go. You, you can then pick each one. And you can see sometimes you end up with... Um, a color not quite displaying right in Jan in uh, Light Converse. Sorry, um, you could see it was kind of like here. You can see it's kind of like it's in between some colors on the color wheel. But you know, you still get the idea. You know what color you're, you're working with. It's just one of the things where the, either the address is slightly off or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, let's actually go back to go back to open white. Go back to open white. This here is your gobos, and what they do is pretty cool. They show you a representation of the whole gobo wheel, so you know what's next to each other. So you have these small things, that cool little gobo, all this stuff. Very cool. So you can see I'm not using. Light, I'm not using the controls in Light Converse at all. This is all through the lighting console. It actually says, okay, this number two here is the prism wheel. So it's accessing that secondary gobo wheel. So now we've got lots of little stars or, you know, lots of little prism for small beams. Then we can go back and go back to open. And it shows you in the middle here which one you have selected. Uh, now you can index it, you can spin it, uh, I haven't used it enough. Um, let's go back to open. This last one is beam. You have focus, which again won't display anything in in uh, light converse. But it will be one of those things you'll have to go back and tweak later. I mean, a cool thing you can do is say, you know, if you go to this gobo, and you want it really sharp for beams, what you can do is just write down, okay, uh, 72 
is when they're super sharp and you get a million beams. So you can just remember, okay, focus 72, and as you program, when you know you want really sharp, sharp beams from your gobo, you know you have to be at that focus point. You know, uh, that's what I do with a couple of fixtures. I know when they're sharply focused and when they're not. Frost did work in here though, which is cool. You know, it's kind of just making the beam bigger more than anything else. And that's really it. I mean, um, again, I don't know a lot about this program. I know it has some cool um, effects things, you know. And that's really fast. Why everything reverts to a really, really fast effect, I don't know. Slow it down. Yeah, so, I don't know, you can, uh, let's see here. I can disable this effect, then I can go to a more normal effect, like a circle. There you go, that's rad. Check that out. So, you know, now you have a room, you have fixtures, you have um, lights being controlled from external source. You can see here all the DMX data and commands that it takes to do a simple pan and tilt wave like that. Um, when you are sending a lot of data, you see this frames per second. Um, when you're sitting static, and there's no DMX changes, you'll see this drop down to one frame per second or something, and that's just because it's not going to keep updating the scene when there's no new data. Um, so yeah, that's it. So it's pretty pretty easy. As long as your uh, lighting console outputs ArtNet, it's a very uh, easy thing to set up. If you don't output ArtNet, you got to get a DMX uh, interface and you know, anymore with everything new coming out supporting ArtNet, I don't know how much money you want to spend to su support um, an interface just for this program, but that's up to you. Um, so yeah, hope that helps. This is Rich Belge, MinistryAV.com, and uh, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments, and uh, see you next time.